Welcome to another informative episode of Creative Black, your trusted source for that and Flutter expertise. Today we'll delve deep into the world of constructors and explore how they simplify complex tasks. Join us as we uncover the singleton pattern, JSON parsing with the from JSON factory constructor, and the creation of custom widgets using our constructors. Let's get started. Factory constructors are a powerful feature in Dart that facilitate custom object creation. They come into play when the process of object creation isn't straightforward. Unlike regular name constructors, factory constructors allow us to return an existing instance or perform custom logic to create an instance. Name constructors, on the other hand, provide different ways to construct object with different various configurations. While factory constructors are the tool of choice when you need to create objects with complex logic. Let's explore this a little bit by creating a configuration manager using the singleton pattern. Okay, what exactly did we just do? We've created a configuration manager as a singleton. But what is a singleton? Well, in programming, a singleton is a special kind of clause that ensures there's only one instance of itself in the entire program. This single instance is accessible globally, allowing centralized control over resources like configuration settings or database connections. Singletons are usually lazily initialized, meaning they are created only when they are first accessed, which in turn optimizes resources. On the other hand, normal classes allow multiple independent instances, each with its own state and behavior. They are used for various purposes and can represent different objects within a program. In summary, a singleton enforces a single globally accessible instance for consistent and efficient resource management. Now let's explore a practical example with the configuration manager clause. We've set up a Flutter widget that demonstrates the use of a singleton factory constructor. Here's a summary of what we are about to do. The configuration manager clause is instantiated twice and we observe whether the two variables are the same instance and share the same identity. And here's how we will do this. We use a factory constructor to create the instances of our configuration manager, allowing us to control the object creation process. We do this in the elevated button, which triggers a test scenario where the two instances of the configuration manager are created. We will call these instances M1 and M2. Once created, we apply some modifications to the second instance, M2, and we observe if the instances M1 and M2 are the same and share the same identity. When we press the button, the test is executed and we observe that indeed they are the same and share the same identity. This practical example illustrates how factory constructors, particularly in the context of a singleton, ensure a single globally accessible instance. This concept is crucial for managing resources consistently across an application. Now let's dive into the world of JSON passing with factory constructors. Consider a user clause that we will use to illustrate this concept. We create a user class with two constructors. The primary constructor takes ID and username parameters and initializes the corresponding fields. But what if we have JSON data and we want to create a user object from it? That's where factory constructor comes in. The factory constructor user.fromjson constructor is a special type of constructor that provides an alternative way to create a user object. It takes a map string dynamic as input representing the JSON data, and it returns a new user instance. In our constructors widget build method, we create a map representing the user data. We will give it an ID of one and a username of John Doe. If we simply display the string representation of our map in a text widget, we will get something that looks like this. If we use the user.fromjson factory constructor to create a user object and display that in a text widget, we get instance of user. Well, that's awkward. Oh, we forgot to override the toString method. We create that and save. And this is the output we get of the creator user. The fromjson factory constructor simplifies the process of converting JSON data into a dot object making it a crucial tool for working with APIs and external data sources. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's explore creating a custom widget using named constructors. Named constructors provide an elegant way to create objects with different configurations. In this example, we'll create a custom text widget. We'll call this widget app text, which will take a string text and the textile of style. 
we'll have our default constructor or our primary constructor, which will take in these parameters and set them. We will also create a named constructor, we'll call it apptext.heading. This constructor will only take in the text because we want to set our style to a default style for our headings. This means that all our headings will have a consistent style throughout the application. We'll set the style to a text style with a font size of 24 and a font weight of bold. Then we'll create our build method and return the normal flatter text widget, provided the text that we give to our widget and the style that we also set up for our widget. Now, since we are using named constructors, we can create another named constructor in here, call it subheading. And the only difference will be that the font size will be 18, but we'll maintain the font weight of bold. The usage for this is pretty simple. If we wanted a heading, we write apptext.heading and we pass the text. If we wanted a subheading, we write apptext.subheading and we pass the text. The nice thing is that the styling for our widget is already baked in. This is a clear demonstration of how named constructors provide that elegant way to create objects with different configurations, like your app text with different styles. So we've spoken about named constructors and factory constructors. Let's create a comparison between the two for building custom UI. In our example, let's create a custom button with one of the constructors producing a field button and the other an outline button. Since we've covered how you would write the code to create both of these approaches, I will just pause the video right here so you can look at the differences yourself. The primary difference between the two approaches is in how you create the instances of the custom button class. With the name constructor approach, you create instances using named constructors like custom button dot outlined passing in the label. Each named constructor initializes the is outline property allowing you to specify the button type explicitly when creating an instance. With the factory constructor approach, you create instances using the custom factory button dot outlined and pass in the label as well. These factory constructors then return instances of the appropriate is outline property value. The takeaway is that factory constructors provide encapsulation of object creation logic. So which is better? Well, the choice between named and factory constructors depends on your specific use case. Both approaches have their advantages. Named constructors are great when you want to clearly express the intent of creating different types of objects. It makes the code more readable and allows you to provide a specific constructor for each variation. Factory constructors, on the other hand, are useful when you want to encapsulate complex object creation logic. They hide the details of how the object is constructed making it more flexible and maintainable. In general, the name constructor approach is more explicit and easier to read, making it a good choice for creating UI components. The factory constructor approach shines when you need to manage complex object creation with additional logic. The choice depends on your specific project requirements and the coding style preference that you have. At the end of the day, the usage code is barely different. Now let's recap. Today we've journeyed through the power of constructors in Dart. We've explored the singleton pattern, the art of parsing JSON with the from JSON constructor and the elegance of creating custom widgets with named constructors. These tools empower you to streamline object creation, making your code more efficient and maintainable. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the world of constructors in Dart. If you found this video insightful, please consider liking and subscribing for more in-depth Dot and Flutter Insights from Creative Black. See you in the next one.